People who work for social media companies, what's a report that you reviewed that you will never forget about? There is a dude posting CP on Instagram, it's been up for a week, and hasn't been taken down, and has like 18k comments on it. I don't understand how the algorithms haven't kicked in, and taken his posts down or someone hasn't manually flagged his profile for removal. Thousands of people have reported him at this point. Somewhat relevant. Today I reported a post on Facebook that someone shared of a dude ducking a raw chicken and Facebook replied by saying that that apparently isn't against their guidelines. I don't work for social media, but some days ago there was a post going around and it had like 90k views. This post was CP, a kid, around 8 or something having sex with his mom, and this was on Instagram. I think it already got deleted, but damn it was 2 days old, and with 88,000 views, when it was going around for. I worked for a company, where a user told his friend in chat he was going to kill himself, by jumping from a bridge in UK. The player reported this to police, and police contacted us for IP address to go stop him. The next few days I checked his activity in chat logs, and he was inactive. And then a few days later he was active again. Such a relief, but I couldn't sleep well those few nights worried fine. Facebook slash Instagram mod. Got a video in my rotation. Two little girls sitting out in a grassy area. Don't really remember much, but they were definitely between 6 to 10. I don't think they were much older or much younger. I don't remember if you could hear a guy giving them directions on what to do to each other, or if it was just very obvious that they were receiving direction. Basically having them do feed stuff to each other. It was very subtle because I remember having to ask if I could mark it for CP. It was obviously CP to me, and it was obvious it would lead up to more, but guidelines are very black and white and content has to meet very specific criteria. However, this video was trying to be passed off as silly kids just playing with each other. I dk how to explain it, it was just super creepy. I had one person say they were just being silly, but another supervisor sided with me and told her it was very obviously CP. I ended up escalating the video for child porn. I don't know what happens after that, since I think it goes to a company that deals with this content. Nothing explicitly happened in the video, but it was just so disturbing and made me wonder what situation these girls were in 6. Oh wow, or thread tailor made for me. I spent the last 2 years working in content moderation and I'd say I handle it well, though my short term memory is really bad now, and I'm led to believe that is a symptom of PTSD, but I'm not gonna get into that. Anyway, to answer your question I'd say the jobs that stuck with me the most were ones that showed animal torture and then stayed on the animal. For instance, there is one video out there of this lady just casually chopping the leg of this dog off and toss it into a stew or something. But the video stays focused on this poor dog trying to come to grips with the fact it's missing its leg, trying to step on it but it can't, then it just kind lays down and cries licking at the wound. That one is rough. The other one that comes to mind was a video of this guy being dismembered, limb by limb. Once his last leg was taken off they proceeded to beat his skull in with his own severed leg. He stopped wailing after a while, but he was whimpering throughout the whole thing sev- Let's see, there was a CP raid from 4chan, a user who we were about 99% sure was a grown man pretending to be a teenage girl, but we cold and banned them, because they spent so much on the site our centimeters wouldn't approve it, and the hacking collective that held the site hostage for months resulting in a massive revenue loss, and lead to the demise of our company. In between all that, all the porn and gore you could imagine. Nothing really bothers me anymore 8. There's a lot. I worked in the field for a year and a half, and came out of it different than I went in. Places like that rot your soul, man. You see the worst of humanity in places like that. I know what it sounds like when a man splits in two. I know the thud and crunch of a jumper as they hit the ground. I know how people scream when they are inside a tire fire. The worst thing though, I was a smear, and one of the people working just got up and ran sobbing. Didn't go and turn off her computer, so I had to finish the job. 
It sticks with me. A video of a grown man holding down a toddler and forcing them. I left that place almost a year ago. Need therapy and my anxiety is worse. I got diagnosed with PTSD. It's awful that these companies chew people up and spit them out broken. They don't care. More desperate people in need of healthcare in 15 an hour will come 9. Yikes. Was a discord moderator for a large discord of over 100k members. We had one guy on the discord who was a well known problem maker. One day he went ducking insane and starting threatening to DDoS people. Problem was, he was really ducking good at it and starting dozing everyone from casual members to our admins. Like over 100 people in one day, all until one of our younger, quieter mods out of the blue revealed he was insanely good at darksing and posted the guy's home address, pictures of his kids and family, and work, and proceeded to DM them to everyone he dosed after we removed it. I don't advise fighting fire with fire, but holy hell did that shut him up. Last I heard of the story was that he asterisk tried asterisk to come back for round 2 until some ducking chad lad managed to somehow get his water shut off. Moral of the story is, don't be a dumbass online, because you may not be as anonymous as you think you are. Not sure if it counts, but I was a mod for a subreddit related to true crime. We got a report about a guy asking really off questions. He was basically asking hypotheticals about what kinds of clues detectives would look for if his wife was murdered. He was saying that she ran on a trail that was dangerous and if something happened to her, he would want to help with the investigation. Someone told him it seemed like he was planning to murder his wife and was soliciting advice to help cover his tracks. As soon as they said that he deleted all of his posts and account. We sent the reports up the chain, and I believe the super admins may have contacted the police. I never heard any follow-ups, so I'm not sure if it was a bad joke or what. It was really unsettling though. I feel like someone could live a stream a murder on Facebook, and as long as the police didn't see it, Facebook would respond like three weeks later saying they couldn't find anything wrong with the post. I know it has happened before. My point is that Facebook would only care if the police got involved. Can't say much because of NDA. I had to review content flagged as inappropriate by the users. Most of the content was political and obviously reported by someone who didn't agree. Some gore would pop up here and there but nothing I couldn't handle until one day I saw a video. At first looked like average porn. I was going to move on. But I saw it. A child. I quit right after following the protocol. I have a lot of friends who do content moderation. Probably the worst they've seen are beheadings and incredibly disturbing porn, and they were barely early 20s when they started doing that work. It's rough. Some people in content moderation get PTSD from it, and they are paid shit wages by the social media companies. As mentioned already, Facebook and other bigger companies outsource some of the work, but not all, to companies in the Philippines, which really disturbs me. Nobody should take a sanitized internet for granted, because it's 99% likely a human had to look through that trash first. Somewhat unrelated, but admins do contact police sometimes. I was going to run away from home when I was 13. So I posted about it on a forum asking for a ride halfway across the country. Someone traced my IP address and contacted the police in my town. Next thing I know I'm getting called out of my room because the sheriff is sitting in the living room with my parents. So yeah, I'd say they probably acted on that. I've worked for many a YouTube channel. The blacklists last for miles. Racial slurs everywhere, creepy shit about literally any female on screen. Never underestimate how moderated a large channel's comments are. Sometimes it's someone's whole day one thing that stuck in my brain was one account that was just like pure vitriol. You guys are a disgrace, you don't deserve to live, kill yourselves and the like. Nothing particularly specific, but just hateful. So before banning this account from commenting I decide to click on it. It's a girl, had to be like 13 to 14, and severely mentally disabled. I couldn't stop thinking about what this girl had been through, 
to make her so angry and that she could only express it online. I'll never forget that shit man. How many other shitty YouTube commenters are just like bullied or even abused kids with nowhere else to lash out? I had a job that involved moderating social phone lines, ranging from party lines to date phone lines not sure if these are still advertised on late night TV. It was the original meet singles in your area. At least twice per month, a child would go missing after meeting someone on the line and we would fax over transcripts and known phone numbers we had a two minute lull between new content and content being screened, so generally predators would wait for a child to dial in, say something sweet, give them a burner phone number, and that was that. I had to tell a grandma what our service was, who called after checking her phone records when her 12 year granddaughter went missing she was from the rural south, and had gotten a voice message from the kid in a train slash bus station in San Francisco. This ancient lady was vibrating with worry, and it broke me to go through the explanations with her. People, guys, generally, exploited the phone tree to reach moderators or credit card checkers to jerk off to us, constantly. I had a guy who told me he was abusing a child there, and that we couldn't do anything, and you could hear this piercing panic screaming. I still don't know if it was a recording or not, but the first time I heard it, I foolishly signaled my horror for a period after that. He would get through and hang up on each other employee until he got me again. People would try to buy and sell other adults, offer to sell babies slash toddlers for meager amounts of money. I modded a website for people that weren't always stable. I know this is somewhat mild, but it's what taught me to always try to take people's remarks about themselves at face value. One of these people was a woman who kept saying that men wouldn't like her because she was too skinny slash barely had boobs slash whatever else she could come up with. She was a bit too much sometimes but mostly harmless. The site had an adult section where people flirted with each other mostly. There was a thread to leave pictures of yourself with a provocative picture or similar and you could theoretically discuss sexual issues there as long as you weren't sending porn. She went full nude on a thread at the adult section and told people to tear her apart. I didn't get to see the actual picture, removed by a female who removed it and asked someone else to reach out to her with an explanation, but I never thought her self-image issues were bad enough to actually put herself out there to be torn apart by random strangers. <laughs>